Hello and welcome to the Comic Conspiracy episode 477 for the week of December 1st, 2020. My name is Ryan Higgins, who's here with me this week. Brock Sager. Kevin Sharp. Oh my god. That's And Charlie. And a train. That's to- that's Toby, that's the train. And Charlie. No Kevin this week, but I'll be back soon, I'm sure. Charlie's back, Charlie. Been off for a few weeks. Good to see you back on. I think it was just one week, or was it two? I don't even know. It's been a couple. It feels like it's been a couple. It's been a few uh, weeks. I've, I've missed you, Charlie. We uh, we don't have a ton of news, but uh, so I, I reached out for some questions, and we got a lot of questions. Uh, but we do have uh, a couple couple small news stories. Well, one, I mean, I mean, one, one's a little bit bigger, I think. Uh, not comic specific, but I know there. I know we have a, a specific story about it here, and that is uh, the passing of David Prowse, who was the um, the actor, the actual actor behind Darth Vader. Uh, he was. Oh, yay! That would help if I had my page open. Let me try that again. Um, yeah, he was. How old was he? I don't remember. I had it here. Yeah. Um, God, I had it here. Now I don't. 85. There it is. There it is. Um, yeah, he was 85. Uh, and if you, uh, you know, if you've obviously seen the early, the original Star Wars movies, he was the guy under the suit. Now, obviously, James Earl Jones, the voice. And it's the guy that was under the mask uh, in, in Jedi. I forget the actor's name. Uh, someone else was actually the face. But uh yeah, the the very large man that was uh, that wore the Darth Vader costume, uh, David Prowse, uh, passed away just a few days ago, uh, November twenty eighth. Now, Toby, I know, I, I I think we may have talked about this once or twice in the past, but uh, I, uh, worth bringing up again. Um, back in the middle midish midish late nineties, yeah pre-prequels when nobody cared about star wars at all yep uh star wars could not have been more dead yep. uh three actors uh well i think there may have been more right didn't some places get other people too no it was it was it was three of them uh, was it just the three yeah 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 it was like they, they did a little tour around the bay area uh like yeah it was uh, uh kenny, kenny baker yeah uh who was r2d2 yeah uh David Prowse, who was Darth Vader, and uh, Boba Jeremy, Fett. Jeremy Bullock. Uh, who is Boba Fett. Yeah. Um, so these are the guys that were actually in the suits. And they were selling, like, you know, little props and replica helmets. And uh, so uh, well, it, I don't know. Well, I don't really even know. Shops. The props What's are that? actually our shops. So, yeah, I think every all the shops got together and uh, and paid for these three to come out to do a signing and uh, yeah, I don't, this is actually a question. I, and man, maybe I asked you this in the first time. Do you know, like even how this started? Because I was at conspiracy, not, I would not, I don't think I was officially working. I was helping. I was there, but I don't think I was officially an employee or I was just about to become one. Well, I can't tell you too much background because I was an actual employee at one of your competitors <laughs> and I was a, a, a wee young lad from high school, so yeah. you know, it's not like the owners would run things by me. Or, yeah, I just, I, I just never even. I don't know that I ever yeah. heard the story of how it even. Yeah, came I, about. I actually don't know either. I, I mean, the, as far as I remember, it, it was you know one day you know the owner came in and uh, told us like uh, him and a bunch <laughs> of other stores got together. Yeah, and we're we're gonna get all three of them to come to do a signing. And one of my jobs was, you know, first of all to sell the tickets because uh, you know we would sell tickets for it, and the ticket itself would also act as the uh, uh, the the uh, certificate of uh, authentication. Like it was a, it's like you know you buy a ticket and that was like your proof already. Yeah. Uh, and the day off basically. One of my, and I, I was, I mean, I was a kid. I was in high school at that point still, right? Yeah, so yeah. It, it's, it was one of my first gigs at the comic book shop where I worked at to clip the tickets uh, on the line where, you know, people came to get their stuff signed. And a lot of our regulars still to this day, um, because I saw their post, uh, posting stuff on, 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 on social media, were all the things, you know, I was there for. Like, you know, I think Trevor, one of our friends, 
uh, I got one at a helmet sign and stuff like that. And it's, it's yeah, funny yeah. because, you know, I was, I was, I probably sold it to him, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, they were super nice. Actually, I think for us, they, they, they split them up. Uh, we had David Prowse on one day right. and then we had Kenny Baker with his wife and, uh, and Jeremy on a, on a separate day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we didn't get um, David Prowse, so I never met him. Okay. Um, we only had the other two. Uh, but you, so you, you guys, you got to kind of not not hang out with them, but kinda. hang around them. Yeah, but it was, it was. I mean, it was, it was. I mean, it's not like what it is now, right? I mean, like, yeah, yeah it's not like com- Yeah, we we set up some some tables in 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 front of the shop in the mall, and we had a lot right. of I don't know a hundred people. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. it was. It would. I mean, something like this today would be crazy, right? Yeah, but, this isn't celebration where nah. where they will have lines for three four three days yeah. straight. No, no, yeah, no. They, yeah, yeah. they hung out. I mean, they were in the store, like you know, beforehand. It was not like you know, we had a VIP room or anything for a <laughs> right, right, right. Like stock room, right? So it's not like we could hide them. But no, they, they were very, very nice. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, Kenny Kenny Baker's wife was super nice and. Uh, and uh, David Prowse would tell us some stories, and and you know, and yeah, no, it was it was a a, a really really uh, cool experience as a high school kid because you know that was like I didn't think that was ever going to happen. Like here comes Darth Vader, right? Uh, a little 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 fact that people probably don't know is uh, David Prowse uh, trained Christopher Reeve for the Superman role to get in shape because David was a was a big uh, weightlifter. He- yeah, he's he's a he's a weightlifter, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. 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 So, like, he was more than just Vader. I mean, obviously, for us, that's what we know him from. Yeah, but yeah he did he did other things. Obviously, well, I, I thought uh, you know for for um, for our world that you know that he 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 was one of the ones that trained Christopher Reeve to be ready for Superman. It's funny if you look at some of those early photos of him. I mean, he's not like he's not like Arnold size, but those old pictures of Arnold Schwarzenegger. There's like a, a, a body, I, I don't know, like a body resemblance to me before, you know, he's not, you think weightlifter now, bodybuilder, you think this, like, no, he was just this like mass of a guy. He was, he was a big broad shouldered dude. He wasn't like, you know, some roided out crazy looking man. He, he, he was that kind of old school style of bodybuilder, um, but he was a big guy. Yeah. I mean, if you look at that, that Vader costume, it's not small. And I think he was always jealous that they didn't use his voice at journals. Uh, I, I, well, I can't, you know, I don't know as a fact, but you know, he always signed his stuff as Darth. Uh, you know, David Prowse is Darth Vader. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he obviously did the lines during the entire movie. He yeah. would say everything, but then they just they just overdubbed them with yeah. two twelve rounds. Yeah. You know? But I, I mean, I mean, nobody's gonna have as good of a voice as James Earl Jones. He just has. That, that's just not even fair. <laughs> you yeah. can't. Uh, <laughs> there's just no comparison. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's sad. Uh, if we're down to, you know, the Star Wars main cast. Just a just a couple left. So yeah, Han, Han and Luke. Yeah, and uh, and, and um, a three PO. Um, um, what's his name? Oh, uh, Daniels. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I'm blanking on his name. Yeah, he's he's still he's still alive. Uh, Don't forget uh, Lando Calrissian. Yeah, I'm trying to think who else. Yeah, because Kenny Baker died. Yeah. Well, we're all, I mean, so, uh, yeah. also we're getting older and getting closer. <laughs> day, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just, just. just Got to enjoy life. Got to uh, appreciate the people that we enjoyed, and you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh well, I was sad. I was sad to see um, more people passing from, especially from our, you know, a guy. I, I mean, Darth Vader is just, and, you know, he is one of the greatest villains of all time, like without question. Oh, that, yeah. that that character, and you know, when you're a kid, you're like, holy shit, Darth Vader is like the, you know, what regardless of anything they've done with the character or. or or um, Anakin and all that stuff, and, and, and you know, post those original movies, just that original Darth Vader character. What an imposing figure! Uh, he, he was a presence. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's yeah, he's uh, when they have been. Oh, I do remember. Peter Prowse, that's all him, right? I mean, he's the physical embodiment. I mean, yeah. like he, he 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 did those moves, and that 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 even without the mat, you know, even without even seeing his face, like you just you could just feel that. Uh, 
feel that uh that that, that power finger. coming from him when he's giving you that finger yeah yeah <laughs> not yeah <laughs> or he just holds his hand up like this you're like oh, yeah no. yeah no that's I do have to say there was, a, there was a funny story because uh, you know he had all those pictures out and and he uh, he tried to tell people that this one picture was extremely rare because it's actually a misproduction. There was a piece of hair on it. Therefore, I think I want to say they call it back and he goes, "This is extra rare." So if you want a collector's <laughs> item, you want to get this one. I'm like, really? <laughs> do I re- weird? Do I really want the one with the hair on the picture, like the little line? I'm like, no. <laughs> Yeah, I thought that. I thought that was kind of cute. He was like trying to pass like this, this is the rare one. This this <sighs> this, this picture you won't see out there in the uh, in public uh, and stuff. So you know, with that, he may have a point. You know, uh, yeah, yeah, fans yeah. are a little nuts at times. So if they want to want to want a picture that never been released, you know, to, uh, you probably oh, right about. I that. would say pre Photoshop, but pre common use of photoshop and digital imaging yeah. so i'm sure sure whatever picture it is now there's a hair free version out there yeah 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 uh, so, uh, yeah, not a ton of comic book news to talk about this week. However, I did want to mention this got announced today, which uh, I'm very happy for. I know Charlie's very happy for, too. Wonder Woman 84 coming out um, Christmas Day. Hopefully, hopefully Christmas Eve. They'll drop it a little early. <laughs> uh, December 25th. It's coming to HBO Max. We now have official word straight from Patty Jenkins that Wonder Woman 84 will be the first film on HBO Max available streaming in 4K, Ultra HD, HDR10, Dolby Vision, and Dolby Atmos. So if your TV or streaming service provides or um, streaming thing uh, works with any of those, you will be able to watch Wonder Woman in glorious 4K as it was uh, as it was meant to be. So this is there. Charlie, this answers a huge problem you and Toby both had. Well, I think mostly you, but had with with HBO Max and um, the fact that all the DC Universe yeah. shows, uh, well, Star Girl at least, right, was was 4K. Um, Pretty much and- all the shows that they were showing, on, like Doom Patrol was 4K. One thing was 4K oh, yeah, that's right. Titans. That's right. Like every single original, even the Young Justice Outsiders was 4K. Was it really? <laughs> yes. Is it, wow, is there a 4K release of that? I thought it, there was just a Blu-ray. They have not, they just not, Blu-rays. they have not put out any of their original content in 4K disc. But if you were on the DC streaming service, okay. it all was in 4K. You, you know what? You know what I mean, Toby. You know what I mean. Just making sure you know what you're talking about. 4K is it's still a Blu-ray, but 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 1080p Blu-ray. You know what I mean. Standard uh, uh, HD Blu-ray, not Ultra HD. Yeah. But, like, at the end of the day, that was one of my big issues with pulling down the DC streaming service is you're you're basically saying that you can't watch the better version of all this content, but it sounds like they're going right. to fix that. I'm curious, though, if they're going to sort of launch with wonder woman give that some time to sort of see what that does to the network traffic or whatnot before yeah. well, doing more or if they'll just suddenly flip a switch one day and all of a sudden a ton of content that see, can be in 4k is in 4k that that was my original concern i saw this and i said cool and then i thought oh i hope they have the bandwidth for for a 4k stream uh because uh, the the big one, I think we were talking about this a couple of weeks ago or last week, you know, the, obviously Roku is one of the biggest streaming platforms out there. And as of today, there's still no um, HBO Max on, on Roku, but uh, I, I would expect, hopefully that's fixed by the time this comes up. But, but I even without Roku... Really, so there was a lot of emphasis on sort of trying to get this kind of stuff resolved and it's part of the reason why i got resolved with um amazon i'm sure is they didn't want to go into the holiday season with the still right not being there because it starts to affect both of them more and more as consumers are buying (laughs) devices and such so i'm really surprised hbo and roku haven't already come to terms well, even without Roku, um, suddenly hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people are trying to stream through Apple TV and mm-hmm. just 
regular PCs, uh, streaming 4K content um, on all at one time. That's a that's a significant, and I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure Wonder Woman will be HBO Max's like first real test because yeah. of how big that movie is. Anything they've had out to this, to this day, including launch day, won't won't will pale in comparison to the amount of people that will watch Wonder Woman uh, at release or within that release weekend. So. Um, yeah, but I mean, my fear is the, the DC service has never really had a problem with streaming the stuff in 4K. Disney Plus, obviously, Amazon Prime, Netflix, like everybody else, has managed to. But DC could not have had that many subscribers. That well, no, I, I'm not saying it does. I'm just saying that there are very large streaming services out there that haven't buckled over moving. Yeah, a lot of content available in 4K. No, so the, the, I, I would. Wonder I, Woman, I do not want my first experience watching Wonder Woman for it to be buffering like crazy the whole time. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. And <laughs> all I'm basically saying is it would be horrible mismanagement on Warner Brothers' part if every other streaming service can handle it and they can't. Yeah. Well, look at Mandalorian, right? Disney Plus had, what did they have, like 30 million subscribers at launch or something ridiculous? Yeah. It was something it was like absolutely outrageous within that first like week or whatever. I think it was 20 million. I don't remember how much it was. It was a shitload. And that, that Mandalorian looked perfectly fine that first uh, opening, you know, release. Yeah, week. and so it, they didn't they no, have no just trouble. Mandalorian. They had all the Star Wars movies in 4K. They, yeah, 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 yeah. They had a lot of 4K content for people to consume at launch. Right, it's, right, right, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not concerned. I'm not I'm not worried. I'm just like, mm, hopefully, hopefully, you guys figure this out because yeah. HBO Max is, you know, had its had its issues. Yeah. So um, I, I guess my mentality, or what I'm guessing they will do from somebody who works in the tech field and stuff, is they will launch with Wonder Woman, take a look at their numbers, and then use that as a gauge to figure out if they need to change anything in their infrastructure to move a large amount of content over to that. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're going to, we're going to go through these questions. We get a crap load of questions. Um, and if there's anything else you guys want to talk about, feel free to jump in. Well, uh, talking about the DC shows, I finally yeah. watched Swamp Thing. Uh, oh, did you? Yeah. I, I, Good. I, it's funny. It was my least interested one out of all the shows. I want to say it's probably the best one out of the bunch. It's good. I would love, and I would love to see uh, see the way you pick it up if if because I yeah, think it's pretty I, well I for them. Over, like you know, like I, as much as I want to love the Titans, like there were some 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 slow episodes. Sure, sure. Uh, I thought Harley. I mean, not counting cartoons. Oh. I think the cartoons were phenomenal. I mean, they're Harley's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, there's no complaints about either of the the two cartoons that did. But all the all the live action ones, uh, you know, I felt, you know, there there were slow periods in all the shows. Yeah, and, yeah, and I yeah. felt like. Just quality and 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 the way the show carried itself, I thought, yeah, you know, just the balance. I thought the Swamp Thing did a really yeah, wonderful yeah. job. I was surprised. I was really surprised. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was good. I uh, I, I would like to see them come back and and do more. I I don't, I don't know that's if that's possible, good. but but uh, yeah, I, I, I definitely enjoyed it. That big break, even even if they show that one season on CW and say it does really well. I mean, they would have to bring all the sets back and stuff like that. I mean, it's not impossible, but yeah. probably more honestly, high- my my only move concern, it to a new location or something. Yeah, yeah. That, that would be different, my thing. They, they, they'd have to probably move locations in terms of where it was filmed, and I'd be I'd be more excited if it got a new life on like HBO Max because it I would have it be better there. The I would budget, think, yeah, to to sort of hit the ground running. I kind of feel like similar to like Supergirl moving it to the CW would come with some concessions on sort of production quality. Yeah, and like that kind of stuff. That yeah. fits on CW very well, but yeah, there is, there is some DC TV news though. Uh, David Ramsey is going to be uh, coming back to the uh, Arrowverse. Uh, he's he's going to be in like you know Superman, Lois, uh, Supergirl, and uh, I think he's going to be in Legends, but not as John Diggle supposedly. Oh really? I didn't see that. Yeah, like so, uh, a mystery role for Legends. Yeah. Huh. 
well, I mean, I don't think there's much of a mystery. Cough, Green Lantern. Yeah, yeah. If he's coming back in Legends and he's not John Diggle, then then he'll be John Stewart. Alternate reality, alternate reality, Green Lantern, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's also coming back for the Flash and Batwoman. So he's coming to all the shows, basically. Oh, cool. Yeah, well, that works for me. Well, I mean, it, it sounds like he has the contract that like John Barrowman and um who was the other one? There was like a couple oh, of people uh, who had uh, contracts that let them be floaters between the shows. Yeah, yeah, uh, Wentworth. Yeah. Uh, or, uh my prison break guy. Yeah. Who played uh Captain Cold. Yeah. Yep. At least I think it was him, right? He he was on multiple shows, wasn't he? Yeah, I think it no, was him. I think he Got the same sort of floating contract to go back and forth between Flash and Legends and stuff. Yeah, because he was he was on he was on multiple yeah he was on multiple ones. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll see. I know they just paused the um, uh, filming of Flash because uh, of of more COVID positive cases on on the set. So I, I don't I don't know what <laughs> TV shows are going to look like next year. A lot of starts and stops and maybe shorter seasons. And I'm sure some stuff got through fine, but it's really going to be the next, you know. I mean, it sounds like we're... I I, I should say the store, California, has, uh, as of this recording, not only pulled back to uh, Purple Tier for almost the entire state, but um, Santa Clara County has has pulled back even further. Um, Purple Tier was basically like kind of where we were back in March. Or sorry, back in May when we could reopen, but we were pretty limited. Uh, they limited it even further, and we're we're all but at another stay at home order. So um, we can only have two customers in the store at a time. Uh, and and based off what the governor was saying yesterday, um, uh, by the time this episode goes out, we could have a complete shutdown in, in, in the state and a complete stay at home order and closure of all non essential businesses and everything it's it's i would say it's not likely it's it will happen i don't i don't think there's any any option i don't think there's any choice um they're gonna have to shut everything down again so yeah uh i I mean as a country we have given up and uh just gotta wait for that vaccine i guess it's all we can do it's all we can do uh so questions Questions, questions, questions. We've got some questions. It's from Hel- number one Hellboy fan, Rama. This is on uh, uh, Patreon. Patreon.com slash Comic Conspiracy. If you want to jump on, uh, we've got a Q&A thread on there for backers. You can go leave some questions. It's a sticky thread at the very top, so you can leave questions whenever you think of something, and we'll answer them on the next episode. Uh, he got a bunch of questions here, a few of them. Um, uh We'll kind of burn through these because he asked many, uh, but we do have some. Uh, actually, a lot of questions on Twitter because I've done a Twitter uh, Q and A in a while, so we'll get to those. Uh, Rama says, "What's your bet on sagas coming back?" Uh, me and Kevin have a bet uh, for twenty twenty one. Whether we see, or no, no, was that? Well, that wasn't saga. That was it. Was that for saga? It was for it was for uh, San Diego Comic Con, or was that Miracle Man? I can't remember. If it was, I don't think it was for Saga. Um, I think Saga will be back in 2021. Yes. Uh, but not in the next few months, I think. Unlikely. Uh, he's got a few more questions. All right. This is... this is the, You get this from time to time, and it's always good to, to go back through, and, and, and I'm sure answers change all the time. What is... Your favorite comic series of all time. Just whatever your favorite comic series of all time is this week. Because, man, that list changes for me constantly. Because every time I think of one, I'm like, oh, but, oh, but, oh, but. Brock, let me start us. Favorite comic book series of all pick, time? Pick, 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 pick a series. Pick a series. I mean, right now, I would have to say Mr. Miracle. Okay, that's good. I mean, I'm always going to default back to Kingdom Come. <laughs> I was going to say, I assumed, I assumed you were going to say Kingdom Come. Toby, 
You get to pick a favorite comic of all time. Slam Dunk by Takehiko Inu. I think you've, I think I've heard you say that before. I think yeah. that's been your answer. Yeah, uh, I that that is too good of a book. I I <sighs> I, I I will. Yeah, uh, it's gonna be with me till I'm gone. <sighs> Yeah, I I think that's my pick. I mean, I mean, look, it's a, it's a tough question. Like, I I I love. It's gonna change yeah, all the time. I, I love yeah. a lot of books, but but since I was a kid till now, since I I found out about it, I my my love for it never wavered away. Like, it's just it's yeah. almost like a custom comic book made for me. So uh-huh. I uh yeah, it's a easy go to for me, but. Uh, I, I love plenty, plenty, plenty of other books. Uh, a lot of horrible '90s books that <laughs> I had, but I love. Uh, you I, say I love Bridge a lot of the, Yeah, I love a lot of the late '80s stuff. So those ep- epic collections are magnificent because they're collecting a lot of that Gru- hmm. Grunwald Cap stuff, which I, I absolutely adore yeah, yeah, and love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but but uh, you know, and I, I like you know Asterix, uh, but but Slam Dunk. Yeah, my absolute favorite. Uh, I'm going to say also Superman. That's usually on my list. I'm definitely going to, um, uh, mm-hmm. but that, that, that usually, and, and actually, um, uh, the entire run of Superman, like all, all star Superman. Oh, all oh, star oh. Superman. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, that, that's kind of a weird answer. That's, that's a lot of books there, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, I mean, Hopefully, hopefully, most people listen to this podcast have read All Star Superman. It's pretty, it's pretty unique. Um, he also says, "What's your, um, what's the, uh, what's some, what's the best comic to be someone's first comic?" <laughs> Superman. If you, if you had a hand- uh, whatever happened to the Man of Tomorrow? Oh, that'd be a confusing as hell comic book for someone's first. That was one of my first Superman stories, <sighs> man. I fucking loved it. That'd be that'd be a hard first step for an issue to read. You'd be like, "What? And who the hell are all these people? What is happening? Why so, are they all going away?" I mean, my answer to this is the same way that I've approached it with people in the store for years. You always need a little more information about the person before you can figure out what their first comic to go to is. Right, right. Like I, I've I've had friends which I've lean more towards stuff like velvet and like that kind of stuff to suggest. And then I've had friends where I've gone right into the deep end of like superheroes. It, it all depends on yeah. the person. Yeah. 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 I think especially, you know, these days a book like walking dead is such a easy book to give someone because it's so self-contained. And at this point, I'm sure everyone's heard about it, even if they've never read a comic book before, you know, I, I love, I love superhero stuff, but my answer for that is, always just grab whatever's on the shelf it doesn't matter because you'll never start at the beginning there's always more to know there's always more to read um most people's first superhero comic was a random superhero comic off Mm -hmm. the shelf it's not the very first issue of a new ongoing story um usually usually yeah but i mean i I guess for me it's it kind of goes back to that how much exposure do they have to the character like if somebody loved batman the animated series I'll happily hand them Hush. I'll happily hand them like there's a number of different Batman trades. I will happily hand them. Oh, they, I think there's a few. I think like Year One works really well because I think yeah. people are familiar enough with the character. But yeah. I wouldn't hand, I would not hand All Star Superman to to someone as their yeah. first comic. I wouldn't hand Watchmen or yeah. Crisis or you know uh, Civil War. Or, you know, I mean, again, if they've seen the movies, something like Civil War might work because they have some idea of what's going on, mm-hmm. uh, their relationship. But I mean, if if you're just like, I'm totally new to this entire world, give me a book. I, yeah, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be those. Yeah, I have to say when when I got that first Superman book that that included whatever happened to Amanda Tomorrow, uh, I did already have. I mean, I was already a fan. I like I watch yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the yeah, movies. Yeah, yeah. You know the the Max Fleischer, 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 Fleischer yeah. cartoons. You know, so so uh, it, it, he was not a stranger to me at that point anymore, right? But it, right, right. it happened to be the first book I I got my hands on. Yeah, I mean, for a long time, I would suggest people like the Ultimate Spider-Man series when that first started as a very good introductory place to sort of start into comics. So yeah, yeah, yeah. like I don't tend to default back there anymore um 
not that there's anything wrong with that book. It's just, I kind of feel like at the time that felt like the perfect book, but as things mm-hmm. constantly change and new comics come out, I, I. Well, it's not as relevant as it used to be anymore since it's not ongoing anymore. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That, and I have the perspective of where I kind of feel like it jumps off the rails and that kind of stuff versus like those first six trades or something were just like bulletproof. They were, oh, yeah, they were great. Yeah. Question from Tim. This is after doing nearly 500 episodes of this podcast. Oh my God. Um, what are we going to do for 500? Nothing. If you could go all the way back to the beginning, numbers are meaningless. If you could go all the way <laughs> back to the beginning, what's some advice you would give yourself about one, how to make an interesting podcast, and two, how uh, I have no advice on how to yeah, make an interesting like, podcast. What? Okay, I just huh? like, am laughing in the background. Yeah, I have, I have no, I have no idea. Uh, and two, how to contribute as individuals to an interesting podcast. Also, no clue. Uh, look, there are. I mean, there's obviously more than two different podcasts. Um, podcasts as actually your job. Um, like where as an income source and where you need to promote and be promoted and sell advertising and make a living off of a Patreon are very different podcasts than what we do here as a supplement to the store and what we do for Geekbox, which is I mean, I mean to be perfectly honest, just friends chatting now because we've done it for so long. The the there is no money in it for for us on either of these. I mean, it's nice when people come into the store, and we obviously have lots of customers that become customers because of the podcast. But the podcast itself is not a source of profit. It's a fun thing we do. Um, you would have you would have done Patreon earlier. Oh, absolutely. Oh, God, yeah. If Patreon was around, we would have launched a podcast with Patreon. To, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, the money we get from this goes to you guys mostly to, and gives you guys some store credits to use the store to buy more comic books. I mean, to keep, to keep you guys in, you know, in, in, in the, in the industry and give you guys some credit for your time here for your, you know, kind not paying you, but you know what I mean? Um, but I, I think you have, I think the problem, um, you have there has to be some personality to a degree, yeah. I think. I've listened to a couple of podcasts where I'm like, oh, these people just have nothing to say. Now I'm not saying we're right. I'm God knows. We'll go on the forums. People are telling us <laughs> how wrong we are all the time about everything. Uh, but I think they're you know, not not I don't want to say conflict, but you know, uh me and Toby and Bryce bounce off each other a little bit. Uh, you know, Brock and Charlie bring their opinions in. Uh, so kind. There's, there's, um, the, the God, the, the, if you just know seven people are recording a podcast, six of them are playing a video game while they're recording. And one person is just like checking Twitter while it's happening. Uh, like you I can just tell them. Can't hold down. I'm sorry. What's that? I put my hand held down. Up <laughs> I don't. I don't care what you're doing when you're not talking. <laughs> but you could tell when people are just like bored out of their mind and they're just going through the motions. And I've definitely had that on here, Robin. Like, oh my god, another episode. And you, I did that every single time. I, it's uh, it's just it's just I have so much crap to do. I like recording the podcast. I wouldn't I wouldn't fucking do two of these a week if I didn't like it. Yeah. Some degree, so I, I will say uh, I think I mean I think we all lean into our characters a little more i mean it's, it's almost like an extension. i mean look when we fight when me and you fight when i when when i fight with bryce or any of the other guys i mean it's all in good fun and we know our kind of our point of views and we kind of lean into it you know so yeah and, and uh, while bryce can up the bryce character a little bit sometimes it's not fake right yeah no it's all coming from 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 that really it, though, far. Just that's really him. him that's really bryce yeah. he just yeah so the, the way i look at this <laughs> is doing it on the podcast and kind of knowing people are listening just 
doesn't really change who you are, but in some cases it turns it up a little bit. And yeah. sometimes it's, it, it, it's, it's the same way that it's very easy to kind of play off. If somebody comes into the store and says, Green Lantern was the worst movie of all time, it's very easy to take a very contract contradictory opinion to yeah. the extremes. And what that does is it causes the extremes to feed in on themselves, which happens on the podcast sometime, which is always kind of interesting. Sure. Um, hey, but I mean, some of the best of the episodes day, are Evil Charlie episodes, okay? Yeah. <laughs> but, like, at, at the end of the day, it's all... We all kind of know each other really, really well, so it doesn't matter where the extremes happen to go. <laughs> yeah. And I think there, you know some level of knowledge of what's going on is it needed. I mean, I love video games, but I would never do like a history of video game podcast. Cause I don't know. I don't know. The, I don't know that stuff. I mean, I could read Wikipedia to you, but that's not interesting. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's why a lot of this stuff, I'm not going to sit here and discuss the stories of amazing Spider-Man this week, because I haven't read amazing Spider-Man like 20 issues. I, I'm going to, they're in my pile. I just haven't read them yet. Um, but that's why I do try to do more of the news and, and, and especially the retailer stuff. Cause that is what I am you know, tied into and not, you know, again, we were talking about people were talking about, um, uh, uh, we were talking about the filming of the movies and Shang-Chi and all that stuff. And and I I think people either didn't listen to the whole conversation or or misunderstood some of it from the last couple of weeks where, uh, they're like, oh, they don't know. Some couple people on the forum are like, oh, they don't know what they're talking about. It's like, no, I, I know this stuff is filming and being worked on, but I just didn't know to what degree they were on in the, 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 the post production. And yeah, just because they're filming now doesn't mean it's done. You know, like these things take a long movies take a long time to make. So I'm not. I've never ever claimed to be like you know. Oh, I'm. I'm reading the dailies for, for Hollywood and, and I, 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 you know, I know where they've shot the last six days of, of Shang-Chi and they wrapped and they're, they're doing, you know, where they are in post production. Like I never claimed to know any of that stuff, but I'm just like, to me, the conversation we had was just spitballing. Like, well, if they're working on it now, there's no way it's coming out in July because they're not that far in it. So, but, you know, having opinions that, may or may not agree with everyone is one thing, but being just like factually incorrect about stuff regularly is hard. Uh, we tried early on in the podcast to do a few more like kind of, I don't say scripted, but but more planned episode. That was always my idea, but it's, it's hard. That's a lot of work. That, that, <laughs> that is a lot that, of work. That Suicide um, Squad episode we did was really good, but God, that took yeah, a lot. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and, and we've done, a, we've done, uh, a, a number of episodes that are a little bit more, um, you know, uh, uh, themed, but uh, yeah, it's that's not what the podcast is. So. Uh, you would you would probably go back and say put a time limit on every single uh, movie review <laughs> episode. <laughs> oh no, I I don't mind when they go long. I just don't want them all to go long. That's <laughs> For me, I, I, just, I just like the ongoing joke of, are we going to talk about this movie longer than the runtime of the movie? Yeah. Like, for yeah. me, that that's, yeah. that's just entertaining to be able to be like, yeah, that's really weird. Yes, yeah, so we talked about this movie. The challenge weekly is to keep on Ryan as long as possible because I know he wants to get off. <laughs> well, I have. Well, the problem of recording on Tuesdays too is I haven't record. I've been working all day, and then recording, and then I have to post the podcast. So my Tuesdays go from you know seven in the morning till midnight. That's a long day. Yeah. Well, and with so, COVID, you uh, you push you put a break in between work and recording. Where before it was just kind of we would eat something real quick, record, and then you would go home. Yeah, it's a little funny because I'm actually a little more tired, and so I'm I'm less feisty against Orion. Well, that's uh, that's the problem. I, there is no there is no buffer. I come home, I eat, and then I record the podcast. It like it's just things in a different order. That's all it is. The drive, the driving home, and the eating, and now happen before instead of after. <laughs> that's the only difference. No, I've I've always found it interesting that like because I've done multiple podcasts and that kind of stuff 
No, so what, you're, and, the Doctor Who podcast is like, yeah. you guys, fuck. Yeah. I don't know how the hell you do that. It, it's and not scripted, scripted, but it's incredibly detailed, incredibly researched. Yeah. That's a ridiculous amount of but work. But thankfully, I don't have to do most of that research. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the, the reality is I've always found it interesting. Like this, for me, is the biggest surprise of doing podcasts was... I felt like in the early days, yeah, everything always went very, very quickly, and it almost felt like by 45 minutes in, it was kind of wrapping up, or like most episodes came in a bit shorter. Okay. And I would have expected that to be, in terms of phoning it in and that kind of stuff, to be more the case, yeah. where like, as things get polished a little bit more and run a little bit more, that we get through the stuff a little bit quicker and that kind of stuff. But I find that both on like wanderers and on this podcast and stuff, the exact opposite happens. Like we've yeah. slowly extended the amount of time <sighs> we record most weeks, not yeah, all weeks, yeah. but most weeks. So like our, our average in like the early days, you can kind of start to see that average grow, which is really interesting to me because most things that I've done, I have always been on that mindset of how can I do this faster? Yeah. Except yeah. podcasting seems to just naturally get a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's yeah. I, I, I get no problem. Three hour episodes. If we got something to say and it's fun, but I'm not gonna, this episode will not be three hours long. <laughs> oh, man. Maybe the wonder woman episode will be no, and two. Hours long. And that was actually the, I was just going to say, that was my first thought looking at what we had outlined for tonight. I'm just like, there's no way this one's going to be super long. So I've been. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you never know. There might be a question hidden in the Twitter feed that well, I can't a... see. We have a lot of we have a lot of questions on Twitter. So, yeah, I, I have one more here on Patreon. Um, so we'll 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 get a last one. Patreon it's from well, Zach. On, he on, says, hold on, hold on. One more one more thing, because I know actually reading emails on a more constant basis. What about it? That's what you one thing you would probably want to do, right? I we used to do we used to all the time, but in social media take took the yeah. place of that. Like yeah. we don't need. No, yeah, don't, I I mean emails are great if people want to send them, but we we turned it, we turned it into a really great thing of like going back. So it's giving us I, stuff to like. I I email in two hundred and forty characters. Like I don't even like or 280 characters like i don't even you're my right, emails are as short as my tweets copy them over <laughs> yeah 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 like i i now write in like twitter shorthand like it's horrible i have i i can't i have no attention span honestly i think it's better the way the email stuff has evolved i like the occasionally <sighs> going back to some random time and trying to answer a question that we may not remember very well <laughs> Uh, final one from uh, from Patreon, Zach. He says, now that we're close to the end of Bendis' Superman run, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, there's only like one issue left. Um, I really like parts of it. I really wish John Romita Jr. was not doing the art on it. Uh-huh. Um, I feel like he had more to say, and I that's why I'm really curious about March, what he's going to be on besides, I'm assuming he's still on Legion, but uh, and, and, and if Mark Ray does take over the Superman books or if someone else takes over, if they continue the stuff with uh, John and yeah, uh, I, I do feel like he had more to do. Um, but overall, I like the characters. I like uh, what's her name? Red cloud. Like uh, she's cool enough that, that, that the whole like invisible mafia thing. It was, it was, it was, it was interesting. Um, I, I don't know how they're going to wrap it up. Uh, it, it created like a, like a, Really bad guy, Amanda Waller. So instead of just a bad guy, Amanda Waller. Uh, so, so, he, it, so he has one more issue of action. Yeah, I think there's one more issue of action. One more issue of Superman. Um, Superman has been really good. Uh, 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 I like the he writes a great Lois. Um, the relationship, uh, the Superman Lois relationship stuff in in, in Superman has been fantastic. It's always been better. It's the strength is is more characters, uh, character dialogue and. Um, more personal stuff, less so the big the big mega story arcs. That's kind of been a weakness of his, where I think he kind of doesn't end these things very well. Like Young Justice was interesting. 
I like the idea. I love the characters being together, but nothing really happens. Like they get together at the end. That's yeah. the end of Young Justice. I really want someone to take over Young and do do more Young Justice stuff. Um, I mean, that is my that is my uh, um, uh, uh, that is my 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 theory is that Bendis is going to take over like Teen Titans, Young Justice, Teen Titans, everything merges together. That's my that's my that's my guess. Yeah, so. uh, I mean, so Bendis' action in in his Superman were were really great because they were telling two different styles of Superman stories. Mm-hmm. And, you know, with all the stuff with like Event Leviathan and kind of uh, the Lois Lane book that's, that that came out of that stuff, it's all yeah. really amazing. But I think, uh, I, I mean, I every time I picked up an issue toward the, at the, of action at the end, I just had flashbacks of Jeff John's stuff with John Ramuda Jr. where it's like, there's a story here that I, 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 I want to enjoy. Well, I, just read it. I it's just, fine. Yeah, I, like, I mean, I can I'm suffer through the art. Bad. It's fine. It's just, yeah, it's it's. There's something that definitely gets taken away from the stories, and I mean, no offense, but th- that Gorilla Grodd was one of the worst I'd ever seen in my life. It, it's kind of odd. So I am behind in the Bendis run. Like I got through the whole Clark reveal and like that kind of stuff. Um, but I fell off shortly after there and I'll, I'll catch back up at some point, but it was really odd when it was announced that he was leaving and how soon he was leaving. As you said, it, it feels like there should have been more stuff to tell, especially because then you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but it doesn't feel like he made it through. Like he created a lot of new interesting characters and stuff within Superman, but he didn't use a lot of the toys that exist in Superman already in terms of the rogues gallery and that kind of stuff. No, yeah, yeah, no. Especially in action, the majority of the run has been the the Red Cloud. The yeah. I mean, it's only it's only been two years, two two years and change. Yeah. So you really think about it, that's only a couple story arcs. Yeah. Um, but but which, that's as fine. I said, is is just having a Bendis run. Like, I appreciate it for what it is, and I like the a lot of the interviews I read with him leading into this. He talked about really wanting to delve into other people in metropolis and i think he did a very good job um with a lot of that with the um firefighter lady and Mm -hmm. like some of that stuff um in the early issues and stuff i just i find it really interesting somebody being that excited to write superman and not play with all the toys (laughs) yeah yeah well you know i mean everyone everyone does what they're gonna do right yeah but i mean you look at a lot of his other runs that have happened in like marvel and stuff and like I never felt like he didn't play with all the toys in Daredevil or sure, like sure. a lot of those other books. Like that that's the part that makes me really suspect he had more story to tell is the fact that it, it felt like he did the new stuff he wanted to do, but didn't really get a chance to touch on any of the other stuff that Yeah. Well you would think he would want to play with. Didn't they cancel like that Leviathan Dawn thing? Uh, it was supposed to be moved back to, uh, like, now, basically. And it didn't happen. So uh, that's what I'm wondering if he um, if he's going to pick up these threads uh, in March and do something new with them. Or if they're just going to kind of go and someone else will, do you will think deal he, with Leviathan. Do you think he might try to do, um, just do a Manhunter book? Well, he won't. But I, I, they had one, the Mark and Draco uh, uh, Manhunter reboot, and they they axed it. So that sucks. I would love some. I'd love to see that come back. It does not seem to be the uh, case for what they're doing for um, you know the upcoming uh, the upcoming DC titles. Seem to uh, I think a Manhunter book is extremely unlikely, but you never know. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. All right, Twitter questions? Yeah, yeah, we got some questions on the old Twitters. Let me get them. They were here, and now they're gone. Here they are from Travis, our good friend Travis. He says, has anyone here watched 616, the uh, streaming uh, Marvel show on on Disney Plus? Besides Kevin. I know Kevin had seen a few. 
Uh, he says, I've seen six or eight episodes. Very cool and informative. The Japanese Spider-Man inspired Power Rangers and Transformers. Episode two with Flo Steinberg and a lot of the women of Marvel. Uh, uh, the, the staffers, that is. Uh, the Kamala Khan creation episode. And the episode with Paul Scherer trying to create a brute force cartoon is hilarious. So Yeah, oh, I do want to watch it. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it, it, it does look force. fun. I've never, I've never read those. I don't they're, think I've read them back in a long they're time. They're horrible. They, they yeah, are yeah. absolute horrible. But they're just, they just came out at when I, at, at at a time when I was a kid that it was just like so much fun. But yeah, they're horrible. never read, never read brute force. So. <laughs> yeah, Toby or Charlie, you guys watch any of that yet? I tried to watch the dance no. line briefly. Uh, uh, I, I guess I should have known based on last week's conversations. Uh, I, for some reason, thought it was more serious of a documentary than yeah. a mockumentary in ways or reenactment. Uh, uh, the episode, I think, is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I only I only tuned into that one. Uh, I, I haven't finished it yet, but uh, I'm quite curious. But uh, I, I took it a little more serious and I kind of was thrown off by it. <laughs> no, no. I mean, you know, Dan was good fun. So, yeah, yeah I want to f- definitely finish it. Yeah, yeah, no, they, they seem cool, especially the uh, Japanese Spider Man. Uh, I do wanna, I do wanna watch that episode. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's on. I think I have it on my list. If not, uh, I, I need to add the, it. Uh, do the uh, what's it called? Uh, wasn't it, uh, the uh, early Spider TV movies also an episode on that stuff? <laughs> oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Uh, I feel like that feels like an episode of like uh, what's that? What's that one on Netflix? Like the the toys that made us. Oh the, yeah. Like kind of, they. I feel like there's an episode. That's a fantastic of like, show. I feel like there need to they need to do a show, a similar style show of like you know, pre two thousands comic book movies and television. You know, ignore Batman and Superman because everyone knows that. Like, like let's really dig deep and 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 get into like those Captain America movies and the 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 Punisher and the 70s Superman or Spider-Man TV show. Don't and forget the, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Steel. Yeah. Steel yeah. Steel in there. Yeah. All that stuff. Can't forget the turtles. Well, that's different. Turtles. They've already had like multiple episodes about them. No, oh, dude, the turtles episode is phenomenal. It gives you a I lot, need to watch it. the toys, but just like overall, it gives you a lot of background. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I need, I need to watch. I've seen them maybe half of the shows. I like it. It's, it's fun. It doesn't see itself very seriously, and it, it's it's a it's, it's a fun show. Uh, Scott asks, uh, "Brock, this is for you. What sort of tape boxes and other shipping paraphernalia, scales and printers, do you use to ship for all the comic orders?" Brock, you are <laughs> master shipper. Um, you have a you have a, a a great way of 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 packing this stuff up, but it's all pretty common. Yeah, I mean, material. I mean, I think the most the, I what's think, the well, what's it? What's the the Gemini? That's the. So we use the you've been getting the Gemini mailers. Uh, yeah, they they have comic. Uh, they have flat cardboard mailers that can hold about ten comics or like a trade paperback or 12. two, depending on size. It's twelve. Um, uh, called Gemini. Uh, Diamond Comics made their own version of them, but they've not been having them in stock. So we we kind of officially switched over to to Gemini, which is it's equivalent. It's the exact same thing. Um, I think that, I think the biggest thing is, is when I, I'm, I'm packing stuff, it, it's, it, the importance is having a, the box size that's correct, um, for what you're shipping. Uh, we use 12 by nine by threes or 12 by nine by fours for bulkier the, things. They're pretty standard size. They're standard sizes. Cardboard. Um, yeah. If you, if you go to any, like, uh, even if you look like Amazon, if you just want to buy them like non wholesale, but yeah. if you use any like 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 shipping uh, wholesale vendors, they're all standard corrugated cardboard sizes. You can buy them in bulk. Yeah. Um, just hey, be prepared to if like you need space, corrugated cardboard in bulk purchases. It's takes not, up a lot of space. Uh, yeah. It takes a lot of space. Yeah. I have a tower <laughs> of Gemini mailers uh, in my garage right now. Um, I mean, tape, just get, just get, I mean, we use the stinkiest, smelliest, <laughs> cheapest tape cheapest, yeah, because it's yeah. just, it's, it doesn't it, like, it doesn't matter how many, like 
times pa- packing you, tape, packing tape. Yeah, it's just packing tape. Like as long as you put it on and it sticks for the most part. I actually, you know, sometimes you'll see that like kind of like higher quality packing tape that's it just comes off like the cheap the cheap rolls. Yeah, you know that's really weird. I feel like it doesn't work. No. I feel like it actually works worse yeah. than like the cheapest fucking packing tape you'll find. Yeah. It's real strange. Yeah. Um if I mean little tricks here is like if you're shipping through the United States Postal Service, you got to tape every seam. So in a, you know, on a normal box, you close that up. It's one across the bottom, across the side, across there's, you know, you got to do six. There's six like strips you have to do. Um, well, especially if you're mailing stuff during winter uh, or rainy, rainy and or snowy seasons. Yeah. Cause but the post office wants you don't want most, water. Most seams sealed. That's just how they want it. Um, Priority is always tricky, um, but sometimes parcel is the same as priority. So always double check if you're shipping something, it, what the priority cost is on it, because it might only be a couple more cents more. Um, and definitely put packing paper all the way around whatever you're packing. Pack it like it's you want it. How, how do you want to receive it? Um. And then the only other thing is if it's shipping to Florida, just buy a steel case um, and hope for the best uh, because I think everybody in Florida really takes that Ace Ventura opening to heart. So, but yeah, I mean, uh, as for scales, what, what you just bought an Amazon? What on a yeah, I mean, I have like a 60 pound. Um, it's like a three decimal point. Yeah. D- pretty standard scale. Uh yeah, it, don't get this. Don't get the postal service one because that one only goes up to like ten pounds. Yeah, no, no. I think I think maybe ours is, 100 is it's, 100, it's yeah. a hundred pounds. It's a it's a hundred. Yeah, because it's it's a bigger scale. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's not a it's not a a, a lower. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. You need something that's, yeah, that's it's a hold it's a countertop. It's of. anything that you could just set on the countertop real quick or hide away is fine. But don't get the post office one uh, <sighs> because it only goes up to yeah, ten that would pounds. We use it. I use it at the house for like. Yeah, I, I have mine. I, I have mine that I've had for years at the house, but because I normally the stuff I don't, everything I ship is under ten pounds. But it, in the case it's not, I have to take it down to the shop and ship it. But yeah, 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 it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Yeah, just just for the cheap stuff. Um, well, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Shipping is hard. You know, it's it's it's, it's a lot of work, and especially if there's not like a ton of um, there's not like a ton of um options you just get to kind of use use what's there but you can't really as long as you're not messing it up i think you're fine yeah well i mean some people use bubble wrap i've seen bubble bubble wrap i think bubble wrap's better if you're putting a box in a box but bubble wrap itself on around an item i i unless it's a like something that's actually in a box otherwise like i've gotten stuff shipped to me where they put the they make the comics into this weird brick and then they wrap Mm -hmm. it in that bubble Wrap, yeah, and you're yeah, like, yeah. what purpose does this serve? <sighs> I've gotten a few things that way, and while the condition of the item is typically pretty good, getting it out of there sometimes feels like I'm more likely to damage the item yeah. than the shipping. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I bought a, uh, uh, I bought a, um, a, a pretty. Uh, you know, expensive for what it was item for actually for our customer. Uh, we just had to ship through the store and everything. And I got this package and I was like, Oh, what is this? And it was just this flat little priority envelope. And I normally, I'm just like, yeah, whatever. And I just cut them open. I rip them open. And this item was inside there and it has like a certificate and everything. And I came millimeters from slicing right through the thing. Um, because there was no protection, there was no outer. I mean, this was not a two dollar item. This was a couple hundred dollar item, and there was it. It was just like thrown in an envelope and shipped. And I'm like, come, come on, dude! Like this easily could have been bent in half from UPS. This easily could have any any corner got dinged. Yeah. This thing's getting dinged. I mean, luckily, it was fine. But I I easily could have cut the thing in half. And not even realized it. So yeah, if you're shipping, especially if you're shipping like on eBay and oh, and always put uh, you can be always very put uh, cardboard on top and a cardboard on bottom. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the, so people, when people, just so people don't cut yeah, into it. So people don't yeah, cut into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I think I think our I think our listeners who are mail order subscribers who've received packages from me uh, know the little trick of how to open their like the the package I make. Real simple. It, it, you really <laughs> only have to cut one thing, <laughs> and it's. It just open like you can open it up and pull everything out. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, so at this point, what we really, really need is Brock to do a video no, for not, the I'm, channel I'm not, of just how uh, to unbox something he mm-hmm. packaged. Yeah, this is true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's actually if because so we shipped to Mitch all of those detectives. And, nah, Mitch Garrett. Yeah, and yeah. um. And I actually was talking to it back and forth. I'm like, so did, did they come okay? He's like, he messaged me. He's like, it was so easy to like, he literally just cut it open, opened it up. Didn't even take any of the boxes. Out, just pulled out what he needed, signed yeah, everything, yeah, yeah, and yeah. then put it directly back in and then put everything packing wise that I had put in there. And he's like, and then I just sealed the pack up. He was like, it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Works easy. So, but you know, Going on fourteen years of doing shipping. <sighs> Couple more questions, a bunch more. Travis says, uh, "How's Future State uh, vibing with our customers?" Uh, even though we are a little more DC heavy here, a lot will be given uh, the chance, but some people are not at his shop. Uh, current Comics Town in Salinas, California. Uh, overall, our Future State numbers are pretty good. We're mostly equal if not up on every title because we had a one-to-one transfer from the existing title to the new title yeah. uh and 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 my explanation seemed to appease most people because we had very few people drop it uh not like one or two people that didn't want them but the vast majority taking them but way more people have added them uh, uh especially you know the, the big ones um you know, especially the big ones like uh, 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 Cat. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Wonder Woman and um, and uh, the next Batman. You know, we've had more people add those. So uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think most people are going to be into it. And um, you know, from a retailer point of view, they're fully returnable, which makes it really easy to get a bunch and just send them back if we don't sell them. I think that uh, the, the future state uh, freebie that they gave out last week. Yeah, uh, I think that that's probably a good place to kind of just say, Hey, check this out, read through it, see if there's anything that, you know, uh, yeah. cause there's still a little, it's still a little unsure about everything that's going on, but I mean, <laughs> we kind of know a better now, but it's still kind of a, well, what is this really going to entail? And I think that that's, that's where some people are yeah. a little hesitant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so far, so far it's been good. Haven't had, haven't had a, hadn't had anyone really revolt on it. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe the first week, people are like, "These suck," and everyone drops it. Uh, but I, but I hope not. That's all right. They're fully returnable. So, um, uh, Ra- uh, Raul says, "I just started reading Alexa Lives Again, and it's led me to this question: Why doesn't Lynn Varley get the same sort of praise as Frank Miller or Klaus?" Jensen. Uh, so Lynn Varley is Frank Miller's well wife. I assume still wife. I, I think they're married. As far as I know, as far as I know, they're still married. No, I don't have to look it up. It's fine. Um, uh, I you know I think the I mean I think the problem is she's a colorist and colorists rarely get praise uh, just in general. Um, uh, you know, uh, that's unfortunate, but I, I think that's, I, th- I, I, I think that's just the, the truth. Just, I, I will be the first to admit, I, we talked about editors a couple episodes ago. I'm not the biggest, I don't, I know some, I don't know a bunch. I don't know editor. I don't know colorists. I don't know anchors. I don't know. I don't know letterers. I, I just don't I, I this. I, I, I'm, I'm like most people. That's not the part of the industry. I, I pay attention to it's it's you know the god I you know Toby I know we can we can talk about um a couple artists who the artists do 
very little of the actual art <laughs> where uh, the inkers yeah. and colorists do way more than uh, most people think. Yeah. And and if you look at that, that Dan Slott episode of 616 where the writer, quote unquote writer, you know, that's sort of the frustration people have is the, the belief that the main writer really is not doing the writing. Uh, yeah. Fair or not, that's the industry though. So. But yeah, I mean, she colors all Frank Miller stuff. If you like Frank Miller's stuff, then you like her work. So, so I, I. So they're not married anymore. Are they not? Nope. They divorced in two thousand and five. Okay. Okay. Uh, the la- she worked on his stuff from Ronin in nineteen eighty four through three hundred in nineteen ninety eight, and the backgrounds to the two thousand and seven movie three hundred. Hmm. Um. Yeah. Did yeah. she? Yeah, she she colored most of his stuff. Yeah, so she colored most of his stuff, but they yeah they they have been married. Yeah. Um. Uh, th- not th- this is not the person that that originally mentioned this on 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 the uh, the people that mentioned this on the Facebook group, but uh, but Juan uh, says not really a question, but I listened to last week's podcast today, and I thought you should know that Shang she did wrap filming in San Francisco a month ago, so. Uh, yeah, it's done filming, but that, it, like I said, we're still very far off from for the movie coming out. So, Brett says, I just reread The Long Halloween and again, really liked it. If anyone on the podcast has read them, are the other Loeb and Sale bat books worth a read? I think we will all answer yes. Yep. I actually need to go yeah, back and reread them. They're all worth a read, but they are, if I recall at least, they're quite different than that first one in terms of shorter story formats and like that kind of stuff if i recall well, oh the what is it haunted nights right yeah. that's the trade yeah. so that collects their original uh kind of the legends of the dark knight the, one-offs the little yeah. little uh um one-shot books that they did yeah. uh the long halloween um dark victory, dark victory yeah. was the follow-up yeah you know i don't think i ever read catwoman and one in rome that's the third part mm-hmm. i don't think i ever read that that was really good it was good. Yeah. yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm wondering. If... You know, it's funny because I just went through. I've been slowly going through my my collection uh, and rebagging, boarding, and, and inventorizing. I do not remember those being in my uh, my Catwoman stuff. I wonder. I wonder if those are still buried in uh in my like unread from the '90s and early 2000s boxes. I'll have to go look. That would be embarrassing if I never actually read that. But yeah, uh, uh, did Tim Sale? He also did the Challengers of the Un. Uh, yes, Challengers of the Unknown, the miniseries with him. But that's prior to all the Batman stuff. Yeah, yeah I have those two. Those are good. But it's very different. That, uh, yeah, Tim Sale's artwork now is unique. Yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, but a long Halloween. Oh God, that stuff's incredible. Yeah. Uh, I love, I love, love, love his style there. It's from that one guy on Twitter. He says, "Is there such a thing as an older comic book creator that hasn't turned crazy or been forgotten by the industry?" Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. A bunch of them. A bunch of them are totally fine. Um, the problem was now say, is a bunch it of- depends on where you define as older creator. Yeah, because a lot of like the like our favorite people, you know, not just you know discounting kind of the the the, the people that have started in the industry in the last ten years. If we're thinking our favorites or some of the guys from the eighties and nineties, those guys are all in their sixties plus now, right? A, a lot of those guys would be considered older. I mean, Stan Lee, you know, he, neither Torn Crazy or ever will be forgotten at this point. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of people just kind of you know they're normal. That only a couple have really gone off the deep end. Yeah, most of them are just totally normal people. So, yeah, but that Rorschach is, issue too, man, that one really hits home for the comic book industry. <laughs> yeah, it was good. It was a good issue. Um, I uh uh. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean that issue is it's. I mean, I mean he's Steve Dicko, yeah, right? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, you know, some of these guys have been screwed over uh, to a degree from 
the the bigger corporations that have worked on their books. So, you know, I don't, for the most part, I'm, I'm, I'm on the creator side. Yeah. Uh, I so mean, they, you know, I guess they the main, contracts, but the main reason I say it depends on sort of the creator you're talking about and um, what you define as old, because I mean, there's still a lot of people who have been writing comics for, I want to say like 30 years plus that are yeah. still constantly pumping out books. It's not yeah. like it, it, it's, when we talk like Mark Wade, it's not like Mark Wade is new to the industry by any stretch of the imagination. No, he's been working in the industry for like 40 years. Exactly. And I think it's easy to forget because so many of these people who kind of feel like they, your Alan Moores and your Frank Millers and Ditko's and like all these people are like, were very, very active and very, very influential. But I find it interesting because a lot of them were very, very influential in a very, like if you look at Alan Moore's work, and I'm not trying to take anything away from Alan Moore's, Moore's work, but most of the stuff that you kind of point to as being that quintessential in, influential stuff was not over a 30 year period. It was over. Yeah. 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 Well, even, even more, I, you know, Look, whatever Moore has to say, it was whatever he has to say. He, he, I don't think he's crazy, and he's definitely not forgotten. He's yeah. angry, and and at this point, pretty pretty dis- dismissive of the industry. That's fine. Like yeah. you know, he's gonna he's gonna he's gone. So cool. Yeah. People people just keep asking him questions. They're like, "Why do you hate the comic industry?" He's like, "Cause I keep fucking getting asked why I hate yeah. the comic industry." Um, but yeah, I mean, only a couple. Like John Byrne went stupid. Um. Yeah, some of his stuff. Like Claremont are fine. I mean, they, I, I'm not into their c- quality of their current work, but he's not. I mean, the guys at like Claremont are fine, and and all you know, Len Mean passed away, but I, I don't think any Paul problem Dini's with him. Um, yeah, yeah, and he's, he's not. I mean, he's as old as as Mark Wader and these other guys from the you know 80s, early 90s. They're, yeah. They 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 were all kids when they kind of got well, you know, teenager, twenty year olds when they got into this stuff. So, yeah. Um, yeah um, no, I, I, I can't I, think of anyone that's... I guess the only point I'm trying to make or the only point that kind of amazes me is we do occasionally talk about how somebody will fall out of favor or that kind of stuff or what have they done lately or whatnot. And then there's all these other people that just feel like their mainstays have been here forever and will be here forever to a degree, mm-hmm. turning mm-hmm. out new books, which is... yeah. Especially an interesting transition, or at least was an interesting transition for me, as I became more aware of creators to realize how long I had been reading some of these people without yeah, realizing yeah. I was reading those people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that was one of the joys, like, later in life, especially with these epic collections, I didn't realize how many of the books, even though they were across different books, how many creators I actually was following, but I actually following. Yeah. I can't remember what book was it. Oh, I was looking at I was looking at something when I was going through my my back stock, and ah oh, shit, what book was it? Ugh, I can't remember. Anyway, I, I opened the book and I'm like, oh, I love this book. And I look and I'm like, I have no idea who any of these creators are. I've never heard of them before, but I read this book and really liked it at the time. And I'm like, did these people go off and do anything else? Like, and I'm sure they wrote a bunch of books for Marvel in the 90, 80s and 90s and then just fucking disappeared and never heard from them again. So I, it's it, it's common. You know, I think most people that happens to, most oh, people it, don't become Mark Wade and work for 40 years in the industry. It yeah. was the first appearance of Squirrel Girl, right? What's that? The comic that you read, they were like, I don't know who any of these people are. First no, first no, because that because that's Steve Dicko, and I know exactly who Steve Dicko is, and I don't have that comic. I, I actually did. I used to have those because I was part of the Marvel one summer, Marvel, like, super, super, yeah, one of those it's like the summer specials or whatever specials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, can't, I forget what the issue number is called. Um, yeah, no, that's Steve Dicko. Yeah, he created Squirrel Girl, Squirrel Girl, and Speedball. Last two, as far as I know, those are his last two creations. Um, he may have done something for like Topps Comics or some shit, but. Yeah, last two, last two big comic cre- creations. 
Uh, from Dan, he says a number of DC books have recently ended, including some that took a lot of people, uh, uh, something that a lot of people liked, such as Suicide Squad. In your comic uh, comic collecting history, which series cancellation was the most maddening, frustrating, and or sad? <sighs> like I, not ending. I don't want to like. Oh, Preacher ended. It ended. Sandman ended. It ended. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that doesn't count. Yeah. Cancellation. Middle of like like middle of a run. What got canceled? They're like did not last nearly well, long enough. So. I guess for me, it depends on how you want to kind of qualify this. Like the tick is probably the one I would go to. And a large part of that is because the creator left the book on a cliffhanger at the time (laughs) saying he would come back someday and finish it and still has it. Um, Yeah. yeah. It's not like that, but relaunch the tick a number of times. It's just that one will always sort of be there in the back of my head of like, yeah, he still could if he ever really intended to. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I guess that's that's what always drives me a little more crazy. Like when I know a book is ending or I know it got canceled, I, I kind of can accept it. When it just kind of goes on hiatus and never gets picked back up, or they never officially cancel it, there's always that part of me that's like. Will this ever come out or will I even be aware when it comes out? Because I know there were like books like Planetary that when it finally came back after a super long hiatus, Mm. a lot of people didn't realize it came back at the time and stuff like that. Yeah, it was years. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Toby's just battle chasers, right? Yeah, it's going to be easy. I'm still mad at him. But again, that thing got canceled. I didn't like how Supergirl ended this last time. Oh, that okay, that got canceled. That got but, that got. But axed. it got yeah. it got in the middle of the it run. got pseudo canceled where they canceled it, didn't print them, but put them in the trades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that got that got axed, and yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, I so I one of my first binding projects was the original Booster Gold series. Mm-hmm. And when I actually read through it, it was actually going pretty good. And then it hit like this weird crossover thing with like uh, Legends and Millennium. Mm-hmm. And then the book kind of just went and just died. <laughs> right? Like it was, it was, it, it, it didn't really have a good ending to it. Yeah. So I thought that one, that one was always just kind of a letdown. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like there was something recently where I was pretty bummed that I got that I got canceled, but I'm not coming to me. Oh, I like that. Uh, I Vampire book uh, that was run during New 52. I'm surprised it lasted as long as it did, but I was still bummed when it got canceled. I remember well, I, that was... I was bummed that it got canceled, but it actually had an ending. Like, yeah. Obviously, he had enough time to finish what he planned to do. Kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. That did that did wrap up. Remember, remember, remember that non-player book. Well, I think it canceled. I mean, creator own. That's why like the battle chasers didn't really count. Battle chaser didn't get canceled. He just stopped working on it. And then it takes a little bit like that too. It's a little bit harder. Hey, yeah, it's yeah. Well, I, it's, I don't it's know tough. if I'm more annoyed if books can cancel or if the creator itself lost interest in the book. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's where canceled or ended becomes a, a interesting qualifier for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, from Jason, he says, anyone in the podcast read Decorum by Jonathan Hickman and uh, Huddleston? It is fantastic, and I'm surprised I haven't heard more about it in the comic sphere. So I'll read a lot of issue number ones, especially from Image. I got like 15 pages in decorum and i'll just like page one okay page two okay page three okay page four five six seven eight nine ten okay by page 15 i'm like okay fuck this book i just i can't i'm just done no sorry no get this book away from me i never want to look at this thing again sorry jason i hated it i just right hated it yeah i, uh, I, I just not, I didn't like I, it i couldn't get to the first issue I think um, I finished the first issue. It's just I 
it did not entice me to read anymore. Struggle, beautiful art. Yeah, uh, but there was just no story, and I'm sure things have changed. I'm sure the book has gone on, and it's it's done something. It's Hickman. He's he's an interesting writer, but I no, no, I couldn't do it. Well, and the other thing is, is doing a Hickman independent book, people are, is he going to finish it? Well, that's, I could also be very, yeah. Right. yeah I guess people would be gun shy about wanting to even start it because his track record's uh, far from the best. Because what was that one that he did with the, that was the weird, like the long title? Oh, God, what was that? I remember. Oh, yeah. He said a bunch of weird ones. I mean, you know, like East to West finally wrapped up. Um, yeah, but after like some delays, but everything else seems to just kind of peter out. It, yeah. it, it feels like, I don't know how much of that other stuff really finished for Max. He says, I feel like nobody also another, another book. No one's talking about Morrison's green lantern run. What does everyone think about it so far? Well, I, you may have heard me and Kevin talk about this a few times on the podcast where we're like, we're reading it, and we have no fucking clue what's going on in any issue, but we just keep going because it's Morrison, and it's always interesting. This is a different from yeah. the Hickman one, where I'm like, what? No, I don't care. And this is like, what? No. Okay. <laughs> I'll keep reading. It's so, I'm enjoying it. I, I like the sort of alienness, alienness of space similar to what you kind of got in the Dan Slott um, all red stuff where it just it feels yeah. like you're in a different place in a different world and like that kind of stuff reading it yeah, yeah um, but yeah it is in a weird way I, I almost want to say that it's fulfilling some of the promise that we got when John's left the book and they, the creators who were taking over were talking about how they wanted to do a little more procedural and more of like cop investigation stuff with, and then that never really materialized. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. feels a little more like that. Like each issue is, or most issues are a particular case or a particular disaster that's being investigated or dealt with. Yeah. Which is kind of interesting. I read a handful of issues. I was like, yeah, um, I'm out. Side note, I wanted to bring this up just because I thought this was super, super random and I didn't realize it. Mm -hmm. But the Longbow Hunter's Omnibus is black label. Is it really? What? Yeah, if you look at the front the cover, spine? it says DC black label, but only on the front cover. On the spine, it still says DC. Huh. Weird. Yeah. I mean, technically, it, uh, I mean, technically, it, it, it is mature. The, 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 yeah. Yeah. That run was mature. Yeah. I just Those figured I'd bring no. that up just because I thought yeah, that yeah. was incredibly random. A, yeah. It's the first omnibus I've seen of in canon DC that's had black label on it. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Uh, yeah, skip around. I got, I, got a, I got one here. This is from Tony. He asked about uh, Dan Slott tweeted uh, some stuff about uh, canon in comic books, like like what stories are canon and everything. And I'm going to read... Um, Dan's tweets here real quick that he, that he links to. Uh, Dan Slott says, the problem of strict adherence to canon with a property as long lived as Spider-Man is it limits the kind of stories you can tell, which is why reboots like Ultimate Spider-Man can be such a breath, breath of fresh air for a while, but then it's canon and becomes just as complicated. Another problem is strict adherence to canon with 50-year-old properties like Spidey. Search long enough and you'll find stories and canons that contradict each other. Two examples. Does Peter need to take off his shoes to wall crawl? Could someone with normal strength operate a web shooter? Uh, strict adherence to canon also leads to boring stories because we always want our heroes to top what they've done before. Eventually, end up with stories where Spidey can easily take on all the Sinister Six or where he can punch out Fire Lord. Sometimes you need to look past canon. Um, and I, I mean, I, I for the most part totally agree with that. Uh, I hate nothing more than fans on the internet that that nitpick every little bit of a story because to me. Like, look, I like continuity, but there is also, uh, I, I think DC does it a little like a hard reset. Uh, Marvel does regular soft resets on their characters. Um, I think the origin of the character matters. What happened last issue matters. 
and everything else in the middle you can kind of fill in as needed. If they want to make a change, that's cool as long as the change works. Um, so, I guess for me, it, it really depends on the the established history as it exists at the time. Like the the what happened, Gwen Stacy is canon in Spider Man. Sure, like it, oh, sure, it, sure. his impacts oh. and everything has carried L- forward, and like like the last appearance of the character, right? Like matters yeah. uh where however they appeared prior but i i don't need every book to be like well here's here's a recap of the last 30 appearances no. of, of of this villain and how they got to this point i you know if you if you regularly reset these characters to some sort of base level i'm okay with it as long as the story is interesting enough yeah. Um, all, all I'm basically saying is I feel like stuff that manages to fundamentally change the character in a way get yeah. really embraces canon. Everything else is optional. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I think you can tell, uh, you know, take Dan Slott, for example. You could tell a decade worth of really interesting Spider-Man stories and acknowledge the um you know uh but you you can acknowledge what happened in um since past but not it, you you can you could not go against it but you don't really have to acknowledge it either right it's not this con- like oh i made a deal with the devil i'm constantly thinking about it in every single book you can sort of just hand wave okay we're gonna just kind of go off in this direction i, I most at Marvel, I think they actually reboot more often than you think. Every time there's a new number one because they have a new creative team shift, that they really are back to square one on most characters at that point. Um, the last couple issues tend to uh, really, really bring everything back to where they they were. Except uh, Daredevil in a lot of run in a lot of runs. I would say Daredevil has an interesting track record of not doing that for a good amount of well, time. Well, by, by the end of the Mark Wade's runs, yeah, he was basically back to normal. And, and well, Charles went off and did some stuff, and then by he the end of the came Mark back Wade to normal. Run, but I kind of feel like you had the Bendis run that fundamentally changed things, going into Brubaker that picked it up, going into Wade who picked up all the stuff. Like, each of those runs to each other left Matt Murdock in a different place to be picked up until the end of Wade's run. Sure, sure. I, I, I'm i thinking a little more recent. I, I feel like that happened more regularly with the older titles. Now, I think it's... um, um, Yeah. I think it's just... It's keeping, keeping the stuff that works, keeping the stuff that, like, is an essence of a character or essence of... of who of like something that defines the character. Um, Cause I mean, look at Stiltman in Daredevil, right? Like nobody cared about Stiltman for the longest time. And then it's like, Oh, he brought Stiltman back and made Stiltman relevant again. Right. Like mm-hmm. you take, you know, you, you, you take these characters and you run with them in a way that, you know, nods to the past, but you know, carries, carries the good stuff, you know, with it. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, uh, <clears throat> so yeah, I, it's, it's definitely something that I think it can be limiting if you, if you overthink it and it, but it can be really like eye opening if you just kind of cherry pick. Well, the, the problem becomes if you're going to change stuff, the change has to be better and make sense. Yeah. Um, Maxwell Lord is an example I always go back to of that was a character that nobody gave two shits about when they made major changes of that character in the 2000s because of the story. They had a much in more interesting story for that character than his current position. And there was never a way in hell they were ever going to, well, we have to explain why he wasn't, he had these weird powers and he was like, well, he was like a half alien or some shit. Like, like, no, no, no. We're just going to hand wave all that stuff away. And if it's, and if you're doing that to shit, if you're doing that to a crappy story where they left these characters, that's totally fine. You know, the Punisher uh, uh, Marvel Knights was a classic example of that. 
uh, Garth Ennis was like, I'm the Punisher. I died. I came back. Now I'm the Punisher. Let's just not talk about it again. And they never mention it again, right? They never mention that Angel storyline. They, they don't really mention uh, Franken Punisher either. Oh, they fucking shouldn't either. They never, I never want to, like, again, just ignore that. It never fucking happened. It's its own little weird offshoot thing. Space Punisher. Like, there could be some goofy joke in a, in a, in a, I don't know, some random book where they, they kind of poke fun at it. But I never, I don't want like some serious ass Greg Rucka written Punisher book where suddenly someone's like, weren't you Frankenstein for a little bit? Like, were, weren't you like, what the fuck were they just doing? With, they just, man, they got to stop shitting on Punisher. I'm not even a Punisher fan and I'm pissed for the Punisher fans. What the hell? They just had him hunting. They, uh, he was going around hunting um, like uh, uh, trolls and shit from from the the, uh, was, the that was the, the angel Thor, was it the angel the Thor. no 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 the real recent stuff the they did that like uh it was punisher was going around hunting random ass shit in yeah. uh 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 i don't i don't uh, even remember what it was. war of realms in war of realms and i'm like oh really why? oh god like, why would you ever put punisher in this no that's not the character ignore no. it you know, that you could just that is not yeah. part of continuity throw it in the trash or or or, or 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 it was uh, it was a drunken night at a, a, a you know at a vi- at a at you know a viking party or something right sure 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 yeah just just throw it in the trash here's one for toby mm. uh umbrella academy yes uh well um <laughs> uh what, what I, you've seen season two, correct? Yeah. Does um, uh, Elliot Page have? It, where do? What do you think that's going to do to uh, Umbrella Academy? This is from um, uh, Mister uh, um, um, Sinista. Uh, I, I honestly don't know. I mean, can't she just keep playing her? I mean, well, so let's let's uh, uh, the the actress. The the actor Ellen Page, form, formerly Ellen Page, now Elliot Page, um, came out as transgender, and um, the 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 character Vanya is, is is a woman. I don't believe is gay or transgender or anything on the show as far or or in the comics. As far as I know, I've never read the comics, so I, I can't say for that. But I she had like a boyfriend in the first season, right? She was dating that guy. So um, um in season two, they. Heavily suggest she's actually bi. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. But she's not still... even okay. Not even suggest. They confirm she is yeah. bi in season. Okay. Two. Okay. But 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 the character of Vanya is is a girl that she's not. Yeah. The, the, to the best of my knowledge, so so uh, I, I I believe Elliot goes by they. Uh, they can play a girl. It's, it's an actor, right? Yeah. I mean. Well, I, was, um, I was thinking, but I, I, I honestly don't know where yeah. he's gonna make a stand. I, I, I don't. I mean, look, I, I don't know that world. I can't comment on it. I mean, go for sure. him. Uh, I hope he plays her. I guess. I, yeah. I honestly don't know how to comment on this. I mean, it's, it's, it's. I, I probably even shouldn't comment on. It. I. I'm... <laughs> yeah, honestly... no, I wasn't trying to put you in the spot or anything. I, I, it was more. If they um, transition the character to male pronouns in the third season, kind of out of nowhere, I, I would that. I, I wonder how that would if they would do that, or if that would work, or if they'll. I mean, they're they're hitting they'll continue to play a girl in the next season, so they can easily maybe like do a switcheroo. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but but other than that, I mean, I I honestly don't know. I, I yeah, you know, yeah. I actor Zach, right? So uh, yeah, yeah says that's... they have to stop being the character. So I, mm-hmm. I wouldn't mm-hmm. bother me one bit if they, uh, he's he keeps going. But I I yeah I I I don't know what to think of it. To be honest with you, I I yeah. I'm thrown off because it, I, you know like like the Wachowski sisters, you know. I, I mean, 
that doesn't make any any difference to the story. I mean that they're yeah, thinking, yeah. right, but this 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 could affect possibly this. I I don't know. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, it's between the actor and the showrunner. It they can decide what's can best for the story from that. Yeah. 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 Or or we just have some Shakespearean times with Umbrella Academy. Well, that's yeah. I, Right, like uh, that's what I mean. I mean, you know, a, a male character plays a female character. Okay, like yeah, it's yeah. You know, the, it's be the first time. So yeah, I, I think it's I think it's one of those things where it, it's Elliot's had such a, a long career so far that like right now a lot of people are taken aback by it and going, huh. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's a legitimate question. I actually, I don't want to get too, too, too in the weeds here. I have no idea. You know, something like Netflix, they could probably go back. I mean, hell, they they edit stuff in Game of Thrones when it was on streaming. They edited the the the, the, the extra guy uh, in, in Mandalorian this past <laughs> the, week. The, <laughs> the, 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 the t shirt the guy. Um, I mean, I'm sure they could probably go back and edit any digital content um, where uh, they were credited as, as, as Ellen page and um, they could change, maybe credits. redo it. But like they could change credits, but it's one of those things. Actually, where... But I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm going to say this in kind of the past tense. I mean, she was in a number of things as Ellen page. So I, I, I don't, I, I don't know. That's, that's interesting. I, I, I don't know that I've, no, no, uh, so that has been such a kind of high profile person that's done this, you know, I'm, you know, like with Caitlyn Jenner, I mean, they're not like going back to, uh, edit be these boxes, you know, of, of, of him when yeah. you know, he was in, uh, in the Olympics. It's very strange. Uh, yeah. It's, I, I don't know how this works in like a modern day. I'm, I'm sure they're going to figure it out. So, well, I mean, I, I think it's I, like when I first saw the news, I was like, okay. Juno's a boy. Okay. Give me a second to process that, right? Like, because it's just, it's one of those things where I think that, you know. And, and pardon, pardon the, the, the group of straight white men who are probably miss speaking constantly here. We're trying our best. Please, please. No, we, like, we understand. <laughs> we, we, we understand we're supportive and all that. It's just, it's one of those things where, you know, you just have like, you know, yeah, it, it's, it's honestly, it's, it's just something I'm glad we don't have to actually come up with a solution for. Yeah. I mean, again, yeah. Easy enough in the show. Just be like, okay, well, yeah. yeah I mean, there are other, Bonnie's a girl. You're playing a girl. That's the character. Yeah. I, but, you know. yeah and, and, and you but, you know. do it. I mean, they're at a point they can have different versions. So I like I said, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, this just comes down to the the general representation and that kind of thing. And if they decide they want to make changes to the show for representation's sake, I support that. If they want to keep going with the way they are, I support that too. It's Yeah, as long as it makes sense. That's yeah. Fine. Final question from M on Twitter, uh, kind of one, but then uh, a bigger question in the, in the bottom to wrap us up here. Uh, any of the hosts read the latest Hellblazer series written by Cy Spurrier and with some serious uh, uh, great artist. And it just ended at issue 12. If so, what do you think about it? If not, why did you not check it out? Um, but the, the, oh my dog, what are you, what are you barking at, dog? Um, you. But the, the bigger question here is, what is the most prominent aspect of a new book that makes you try it? So first, I know Charlie, Toby, I doubt you guys read the new Hellblazer series. Brock, I think you read... I read the f- special. The first issue? No. Yeah, yeah, before it started. I read the special. Okay. And that was a steamy pile of garbage. Okay. I, 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 just... well, I read the entire series, and it was fucking amazing. Uh, by far... Far, by far, the best Hellblazer comic in years. You even like the special? All of it. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I just couldn't. By, like, not even close. Not even the last 
50 or 80 issues of the, of the Hellblazer comic was as good as this. Um, some of those issues, there was like a two-parter with uh, the mer- these mermaids. So I just have not read 12. I have not read the most recent issue, uh, the, the final one. I just did sit my stack. Uh, but uh, it, look, we talk shit about Size Barrier and some of his X-Men stuff because it's just really bad. Uh, this, though, it, it's a great little one, two-off story. I mean, there was a bigger narrative yeah. Uh, but mostly just these really genius little one and two off stories of, of Hellblazer. And again, being black label, it's it's back to R rated, you know, Constantine swearing, yeah. nudity, the whole the whole nine yards it is fantastic. Um, if if you know, I look, I, I like me some DCU um, John Constantine. I love him just as Lee Dark. I, I love yeah. all that stuff. But I, I did miss that that darker uh, uh, Constantine. So this this definitely is is that. Yeah, I just I couldn't uh, get into it. I I, I didn't mind Superior's what? dreaming. I thought he did a a, a good job with continuing yeah, it. I, I think it would just there's okay. This there's interesting stuff in there. I got a little lost in the big plot. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, uh, the current series I've liked a lot better. Yeah, waking waking hours. Yeah, that one's been really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but. What is the most prominent aspect of a new book that makes you try it? That's a great question to end on. And, you know, we've answered stuff like this before, but it doesn't hurt to to go back. Because, you know, I, I think for a lot of us, um, obviously character is pretty important. Uh, but creative team is going to be usually the, the, the most important part. Um, I mean, I'm definitely a writer guy, so, you know, I love great art, but, but, you know, an artist I like on a character I don't care about on a writer I don't care about is not going to get me to pick up a book. But, you know, yeah, I'll get pretty much anything Tom King does. I, I can't imagine he'd write a character. Also, I don't think he'd have read a character I wouldn't care about. You, but, you uh, would get a Tom King written and drawn book. Of course. So... I think, think a ten of them. For me, it definitely comes down to a little bit in terms of character, mainly in terms of writer. But at this point, I've also been trying to par down as much as I can. So it would also have to be a book that I feel like, like buying the Batman Max book um, was a no-brainer for me because I wanted to support the fact they were doing that. I love the Max as a character. I love Batman as a character. Sam Keith doesn't do much these days. So right, right. going into that was very, very easy for me. And stuff like that, I always would kind of happily buy the single issues and a nice hardcover eventually, etc. cetera. Um, but that's sort of the magic sauce. I need something where I feel like I'm supporting the book itself or the particular creator on a book that I feel like my support matters a little bit more. Like I'm, I'm not going to, if they put Jeff Johns on Batman tomorrow, I'd probably wait for the trades. (laughs) And it's not because I wouldn't have interest in reading the book. It's just, they don't need my sales on the main Batman book at all. It's not going to keep it from getting, not that my, purchase of a book is going to stop it from getting canceled but i am a big believer in that i can't complain when it gets canceled if i'm not buying the book right 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 well i think um i i think most people are gonna gravitate towards you know a lot of people gravitate towards character and a decent amount of people gravitate towards creators um that's for the kind of standard, you know, uh, superhero genre. When it comes to more independent stuff or original graphic novels, I would assume, you know, creator is probably still number one. Um, but just just content, just story idea, you know, you know, what, what you know, how does the story seem interesting? You know, how do you read a book? How do you see a movie? Right. I mean, well, now they're all franchises. So that's how you see it because it's a star Wars movie, but yeah, I mean, you know, well, what, what is this random science fiction movie? What is this random drama? You know, I mean, does it seem interesting? Do you yeah. like the actors? Right. It's the same idea. India is a little harder for me just because I, I 
obviously with something like the tech, I'll just pick up whatever comes out, new series or not, new creative team yeah. or not. Um, but in general, most independent books, I don't like buying number ones anymore because I've had plenty of stuff where I'm like, this is really good. And then it never ends or it never, <laughs> you never there's some it. series that like issue two never comes out. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, well, I, no, that's that's definitely true. I think for I think for me with independent is, I mean, I'll go through image and I'll be like, okay, who's the creator? Do I know them? No. Okay, does the art entice me? If there's like like preview pages, eh. yeah. And then it's I'll read the the synopsis, right? If the synopsis catches me and the art catches me, then maybe I'll I'll, I'll give it a shot. Um. If it's something that like is it like Donny Cates is doing that crossover book, right? Which I like Donny Cates enough, but I'm not reading his Marvel stuff, but I've liked his independent, so I'm gonna go and read mm-hmm. crossover. Um two books that I kind of like recently like went out on a limb for kind of just look what like just based off of it looked interesting and the concept seemed interesting was Origins from Boom mm-hmm. and Um We Live from Aftershock. And it was yeah, I heard really good things about We Live. Like I've really enjoyed We Live, and I'm like, I, I, like surprisingly a lot more than I thought I would. Um, but yeah, it's one of those things where like there's, there's so much coming out that it's you kind of have to find your own your own filter for what you're gonna check mm-hmm. out. I mean, some people like. Oh, they wait till somebody tells them that something's good, and then they go buy it. Well, yeah, yeah. Obviously, obviously, you know, uh, peer reviews and 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 um, and people doing um, you know, uh, uh, you know, critical reviews and everything. Obviously, are 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 super important for a lot of people. But I, I think you know, it, it's tough if you're looking at a wall of comic books. If you're like, if you're like, uh, uh, oof, like, how do you, you know, how do you? where do you start if you're totally blind to this stuff, if you have no idea what's going on, you know, covers still is, is a really strong reason people pick up a book just to look at it. Cause like, well, oh, that's cool cover. Right. So one of the problems, I wish we had more space in the store for uh, more face out trade paperbacks. Cause you can't, man, selling a spine is tough. Yeah. Selling a front cover is a lot easier. Uh, I, I wish we had a better way to do that. It's, it's called more space, which, well, sure. <laughs> We don't have. So what you need to do is you need to put a digital like photo um, frame there with just the different covers that rotate. <sighs> oh, I kind of like that actually. I like that. Oh dear God, no! He's going to make me wire that whole thing up. Well, I had that digital frame, but that thing sucked. I actually, did have something like that with like little advertisement suck, but yeah. No, because I'm just thinking you're gonna you're gonna want me to install like vid- like small video screens on wow. top of the section so you'll take out one of the dc <laughs> signs but replace yeah. it with this this screen that's that's networked so all the screens on the dc only show dc titles and then the uh, ones no, all you do is you buy one of those like photo frames put it there just have to run power to it and just make it run from images on like an sd card yeah 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 the last one that's you got, what i had the, the, the yeah. last one you got sucked that's what I had. Yeah, you no, know, just the, the the frame thing sucked. I was I was excited, and I was like, "Oh, this does not work." <laughs> what are you gonna do? That's okay. Toby, yes. What do you even look for when you buy a comic these days? There's black cat in it. Uh, I mean, I, uh, art is usually the fring- first thing that grabs my eye if it has a mm-hmm. cover. I mean, look, I I, I grew up on the '80s. Uh, movie posters, right? Where like the cover itself will tell the story, uh, which is kind of is a lost art these days. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, art is number one, and I'll flip through it and see if the art inside is also as, just as dope as the cover. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, it's whatever speaks to me. I mean, it's, I, it's kind of a corny answer, but it's like whatever I pick up and I'm like, this looks like something I enjoy. It up. Yeah. I pick up anything that that I think I like. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, obviously, you know, friends and you yourself, like you know, like Charlie and you know whoever like recommends people or you know people that know me that you know 
go like, this is probably a book you enjoy and I'll flip through it and I'll make my decision at that point. Uh, yeah. and, and, and people on, the, on our Facebook group have recommended books to me like Hilda that I've gotten to truly uh, enjoy. Uh, but yeah, I mean, art's number one, uh, but the story is what keeps me to come back. So, you know, art alone is not going to do it. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, fizzle out really fast. Uh, and if the story is really good, I'll, I'll, I'll keep coming back for more. So it's almost like, you know, you need a little bit of both. Yeah. But a dope cover, man. <laughs> I tell you, man. Covers cover sellers. Yeah. I mean I mean you know me, man. I bought plenty of horrible books or books I don't even read. But if they have a dope cover, I'll I'll buy yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. A cover sell, man. They, there's a reason. There's a reason they want those really good covers. You know? Yeah. Shitty art art inside. I dude, I had, I had this I had this guy. That I swear, it would come like every week. It'd be like, I bought this comic because of this cover, and I look inside, and it's nothing like it. I'm like, did oh, you not flip this through isn't, it before? This isn't this isn't some guy that wandered off the street buying his first comic. This is a guy that's in every or most weeks, many weeks, regularly, often reads has read comics for decades and decades and i'm like yeah dude no shit this has always been the case i'm (laughs) like sorry like this is not new like what are you what are you thinking yeah (laughs) very weird yeah especially variant covers and everything these days yeah it's there's a lot of oh boy yeah it's tough it's tough because there's just so much so much to read so much to look at you know they're it's it's it can be difficult to you know people all the time are buying doubles of books by accident because they. Uh, That's why I love the hub man. You scan it goes beep if they're in the system. Oh, Charlie, <laughs> yeah, Charlie yeah. knows this. Like sometimes these omnibuses, they have the the, the DM covers. Yeah, the yeah. world cover. Yeah, the variant cover. Wow, yeah. they really, really, really fuck with me when I like both covers. <laughs> we're not talking about like you know three to five dollar comic, you know, or worst case ten dollar comic. We're talking about like you know. Hundred something buck. Well, I mean, not, oh. not always, but usually for Marvel, the variant cover is actually just an original cover from one of the comics. Yeah, and the the standard cover is like a modern day recreation that works better as like a cover of an omnibus. Yeah, so that's usually how that works. Yeah, um, if you want, yeah. But there's 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 been a couple of times, and and, and Charlie has has, has uh, gotten part of my in this this decisiveness on some of these like really expensive ones where I'm like, oh no, I don't know which one I want. Like, oh, he just shakes his head at me, and I could feel it. He doesn't even have to say it. Like I can feel him shaking his head at me. Go, you dumbass. <laughs> Yep. No, for me, the interesting thing about the uh, multiple covers on Marvel, and maybe this will help you in the future, Toby, it does not help you with the DC side. Unfortunately, on DC, you just have to figure it out yourself. Um, But in some cases, what I find kind of cool is sometimes one of the covers is actually printed on the book itself. So if you know which covers printed on the book, you can order the dust jacket of the other cover, and then you technically have both covers. Ooh, then you have both. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, well, it's been a real struggle on those because, again, you know, if it was a five dollar book, I'd just buy both. But on these big army yeah. books, nah, I can't do that. <laughs> okay. That is the podcast. Thank you all very much for listening. Uh, normally, first Tuesday of the month, we go through and do all our Patreon stuff. But uh, when the first Tuesday is actually Tuesday, or I'm sorry, when the first Tuesday is actually the first, uh, generally Patreon does not process for a couple of days. So we still got our November people to thank, but that's perfectly fine because we'll have plenty of opportunity to thank everyone in December. But for now, one last thank to our November top tier backers, Joe Duff. Jesse Peterson over at the Comic Book Matters podcast, Jimmy Rivera at the Social Forum podcast, Andrew Nelson Mendez at Recovery of an Anime Junkie podcast, Craig Anderson at craigpanderson.com, and of course, Mario Miranda at the uh, YouTube channel, The Comic Lounge, dedicated to talking about comic books and interviewing creators. So check those guys out and all the things they do. It'd be greatly appreciated. And uh, if you want to kick us a couple bucks, patreon.com slash comic conspiracy. 
Uh, we've got a Q&A thread on there for, for backers. Uh, the high tier backers get a nice little promo every month at the end of our podcast. So uh, they support us. So we would hope you guys will also support them. Please go to geekbox.net, comicconspiracypodcast.com, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify for all our previous episodes. Uh, you can go to comicsconspiracy.biz. That is our storefront where you can purchase comic books from us. And especially now that we are in the uh, purple tier shut uh, a near shutdown in the state of California, purchasing your comic books online for delivery or, um, uh, you know, pick up at the front door uh, is, is greatly appreciated. We of course can't have a limited amount of people in the store for a very short amount of time. I expect we will be limited sooner than later to no one in the store, but uh, you know, okay. Um, I'm coming on Tuesday night still. What's up? Has your friend been coming on Tuesday night still? Uh, uh, we've uh, um, th- th- there's uh, not as often. I think once or twice. Maybe the the pandemic has, has stopped that, so we'll see. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. Uh, please check out all the other stuff we do. Conspiratorbrock dot com for box Brock's, uh blog pull list and unboxing videos. You can go check out his work there. Charlie's got the Wanderers and the Doctor Who. Sorry, the Wanderers and the Wanderers Fourth Dimension. The <laughs> that is a Doctor Who podcast. Charlie, they're back, baby. I heard there's a New Year's episode or Christmas episode. Yeah, New Year's. They just yes. dropped the trailer for it for the some, some something something the Daleks. Yeah, you got you got content again. Yes, it will be nice to have something new to cover. Actually, yeah. um, the episode. So. I rarely talk about the Wanderers podcast on here, but I will say this. The Big Finish the Big Finish audio adventure we just reviewed and the one that we recorded most recently yeah. was amazing. Cool. Is it a newer uh, newer um, audio drama or an older one? It's a newer one. It's one of the War Master audio dramas yeah. called yeah. Antigenesis, and it was really good. <laughs> So cool, cool. Let's check it out. Um, I will do a few of them, but man, uh, uh it's your time consuming. <laughs> yeah, only I had a six hour commute every day. I listened to more of them. Yeah, trust me. I, I, <laughs> I always put it off too long to listen to for the podcast. So I always have to be like, yeah, yeah, now how yeah, am I going to yeah. schedule in a four hour listen here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Charlie, do it the Toby way. You go to sleep and press play. <laughs> <laughs> have a just Look in your head. Podcasts I've listened to, and then start also talking check- about like stuff that could have been from the dream or could have been from the audio adventure. I'm not oh. sure which. <laughs> dream man is a magical thing. I'm telling you. Also check out the uh, weekly series of uh, interviews called Between the Panels at fanbasepress.com. That's from our good friend Kevin Sharp, who will probably be back on in a week or two, I'm sure. And uh, leannehill.com. That's my wife, uh, Leanne. That's her website. You can go check out her artwork on there as well as pick up some prints from her. Uh, she's shipping for Christmas, so the next week or two, get, if you want those prints yeah, before gotta, Christmas. You got to get your Christmas for, uh, orders in yep. stat. Yeah, for yourself or for friends, uh, etsy.com slash shop slash Leanne Hill Art. We are almost all on Twitter. Ryan Higgins, Ryan, that's myself. Uh, one day Brock Sager will be back. But they, Twitter's they, talking to they, him. They changed the email they sent to me, and today they asked for my They're phone working. number randomly. So I'm like, what, working on what it. is it, man? Come on. They're gonna, you're going to be back. Toby XI is Toby. Insanity and Chaos is uh, is uh, Charlie over there. And then the store is Comics Con Store. Give us a follow. It always, uh, always helps if you want. Uh, Geekbox. I was talking this week about... Uh, oh, Miles Morales. I, I meant, actually meant to talk about that a little bit this week. Uh, maybe next week. We talked a little bit about Miles Morales. We talked about, uh, we talked about uh, spoilers for Mandalorian this past week. So a little, uh, little Mando talk. Let's go check out Geekbox. Also, Manga Machinations have uh, been on there a few times. Our good friends over there talk about anime and manga. It's, uh, if you want to listen to all the all the all the hot new all the hot new manga and anime, but mostly manga because it's Manga Machinations. Go check them out as well. 
Okay, that is it. We're done. We're gonna oh, Toby, keep, end this keep episode him on for another minute. Let's make it two hours. Keep yeah. him, Toby. I, I, did, I did. I I was hoping for a it was a right stuff sale on Black Friday to get the City Hunter. Did they not? Well, I it was like... five bucks off. So yeah, yeah. I have a feeling it might be a better discount at some point yeah, later. Yeah, yeah. But then you know, if you wait too long, that stuff will just disappear on you, and then it's going to hundred dollars <laughs> on eBay. Yeah. 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 Uh, they'll, yeah, it'll, it'll happen. Um, yeah, I might have to yeah it. stuff all comes and goes. I might have all to comes and pull goes. it and just actually pick it up because it's niche enough of a anime that I think it might just disappear on me and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. That is it. We're going to stop now. Thank you all. I'll we'll catch you in a minute. Next... Maybe two. Yeah, no, you did good. Well, you did good. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, it doesn't matter because this trims down. Then I put in the <laughs> music, so two hours is meaningless. So it doesn't matter. We'll end right here now.